Okay, today's uh, lesson comes from 3.5, Linear Programming. Um, you've had of her, probably heard of computer programming, which is like a series of code steps that you have to go through to get the desired result to show up on the output, whether it's the monitor, um, the computer, laptop, whatever it is. Um, Linear programming is similar. It's all based on linear things, and it will be a series of steps. So we're going to talk about some of those key pieces to the process. So let's get started with a graph that we've seen before. Uh, feasible region, three inequalities it looks like, with a shaded space. Now this shaded space uh, happens to be a triangle, and it has some vertex points. And so right now, whoa, right now let's take those uh, points and identify them. There's one there, one in this corner, and one in this lower left. Now we should also be able to identify each of those inequalities just by looking at this graph. Now you could go around and say x equals this, y equals this, but we're not talking about identifying the lines. We want the whole inequality identified in one step. So let's try it. Let's go first with the light blue one. We recognize it as a horizontal line, so we better be thinking y equals a number. Um, looks like it only goes up 2 if we're assuming this is by 1s, and so y equals 2. But because we have a dashed line, it means something, and because the shading from that dashed line was going down, we also add another piece to the puzzle. So we should have y is less than, and it's a positive 2. Now, next one. Let's go to the vertical line. We should know all vertical lines are x equals a number, so we're at 1, 2, 3, 4 um, in the negative. So x equals, but again, we're to the right of our line, so we're going to be, and it's a dotted line, so greater than or less than, but because we're to the right, x is greater than our negative 4. That leaves the burgundy one. We're usually looking at an oblique line, y equals mx plus b. Uh, if you look at your y-intercept, it's the same as that point. If you look at your rise over your run to get from one point to the other on this line, you'd be looking at two-fourths, and two-fourths reduces to one-half. So we would have y. Look at your shading for this line. It goes above the line, so y is greater than. The slope was one-half x plus two. So there are the three inequalities that actually made up this feasible region. Now remember, feasible means possible. That's where your answers can come from, anywhere in that region or any of the vertex points of that region. So that's the next thing we're going to do, find these vertex points. So the way we have this one set up, horizontal, vertical, and oblique lines, it's not going to be difficult. There will be some that will be a little more difficult that I'll talk about um, shortly. But let's identify them. So our first point is the intersection of the y-axis and the line y equals 2. So we would have the point 0, 2. Next point is the intersection of the line y equals 2 and x equals negative 4. So we would have the ordered pair negative 4, 2. Lastly, we would have the point that is the intersection of the x-axis and the vertical line x equals negative 4. So we would have negative 4, 0 as our ordered pair. We have found them exactly. It's been fairly easy due to the vertical horizontal nature of this graph. They will not all be that way. So an example. If I came down here and drew a line, and let's call that L1, and then I drew another line, and I call that L2. And that um, intersection of that line is not very nice. It is between our dots, can't find it, can't, we can guess, but guessing isn't good enough. We need the exact version. Do not forget that when we solve systems, we have been using graphing, which is not very accurate, and we've been using substitution and elimination. Those would be the two choices you want to make at this point, 
You would take your two equations, whatever L1 and L2 were, and you would then stack them if you wanted elimination, substitution, solve for one variable, put it into the other, so you could get an exact solution. Exact solutions will be key to this process. So graphing every step along the way is definitely um, needs to be accurate. So you have to be careful along those steps. One little mistake, yes, could, as you know, doom the entire problem. So let's talk about what the linear programming steps are. And you'll notice that three of them you're pretty familiar with, and they're really what we've sort of just done here. You will take word problem, identify the variables in it, and I probably should have said, make sure you read one, two, three, four times. And then your first job is to state what's missing. Now, earlier in the week, we had some money problems. Um, I have a certain amount of my money invested at uh, 3%, different amount of my money invested at 9%. You would have to say X equals the total money invested at 3%. Y is the, they're all linear, so you're going to usually see two variables in almost every single one of these that you must identify. Step two, translate the words into a system of equations and inequalities. I can give you a hint here, and there's usually going to be three or more of these. And the or more is key. Sometimes there'll be five, six, seven of them. Any restraint, like we've been just practicing in 3, 3, 3, 4 that we've been writing for word problems, start comes to play in all of these problems. Graphing is the third thing. You're pretty good at that, but a couple of reminders. Make sure. You find the x and y intercepts. Remember the shortcuts there, c over b for the y intercept and c over a for the x intercepts. Those could be key points that you will need sometime in your work. So if you just solve y equals mx plus b, you're specifically going to be missing the x intercepts. Don't forget to use your solid or dotted line based on the inequality. Obviously shading based on the inequality. And then as we just showed you, find the vertex points exactly, so using substitution or elimination. Then we have three new steps, four, five, and six here. Four says write a formula, expression to be maximized or minimized. Where does that come from? The business model, which is what most of these problems we're going to be doing are um, diagrammed around, uh, says you're going to maximize your profits and you're going to minimize your costs. Now, these problems will not be um, simultaneously done in one problem. You will either have a cost problem or you will have a profits problem. And you'll be able to tell by reading it, seeing the clues in the problem right away. So they also in the book call this formula or expression the objective statement. So an example here. If our company is building um, black and white and color TVs, and we want to know how many should we build rather than building the same amount or, you know, obviously with black and white being out of it now. But uh, we could say we earn a profit, and this would be all in the paragraph of information. Let's say we earn a profit of uh, $50 on each black and white TV, and we earn a profit of $120, whoops, $120 on each color TV. Okay, so we want to make it similar we'd look and that c would be our objective statement for this situation profit would be equal to in a, any given day um, the fifty dollars we make on each black and white and the hundred and twenty we make on each color that equation you want to make sure does not get caught up in your system stuff it should not once you see the sentence that talks about the profit or the cost you need to put that aside down below um, leave it keep it out of the way your vertex points, which you found up in step three, will be key. You will make a little XY table of those vertex points and use them. In this case, uh, it actually would be a BC table. And so, let's say one of them was 2, 6. If we came up with one of our vertex points being 2, 6, then it's our job in this step five to take 2 as our X value, B, and C as our Y value, do the math, and come up with that profit number. 50 times 2 is 100, 120 times 6 is 720, add them together, we get a total of our profit being 820. We will check every single ordered pair combination that was a vertex, 
we will do the number crunching. We're looking for the one that maximizes. So if we say 820 after we do all those other ones is the highest number, then that would be our conclusion, concluding number. But then notice, step six, summarize, it's going to be just like English class. Put it back into the context of the problem. So in this situation, the one I just made up, we would say that in order for our company to be most profitable, we need to manufacture um, two black and white TVs for every six color TVs. And then, of course, your work would vouch for that. So here's an example, D step through. I didn't do the whole problem, of course, but those are the steps you would go through to do a linear programming problem. So the next thing is to give you one. So that's what you're going to see here. And I will come back to it. Um, you'll read through it. And I've got different steps spelled out, so just notice those, write them down. We want you to write a system of inequalities to represent the constraint. So everything that's missing, everything you know something about, that should go down. Once you have that set of inequalities, you should be able to graph. And I say, let's uh, count by tens so that all our graphs look similar and we can uh, compare together and find our mistakes. Find the vertex points as well. Then you should have an objective function would be the next step, talking about the company's profit for the afghans and the sweaters. You need to take those vertex points and do that substitution. And when you finish, at what point does the company maximize its profit? So when, whether you say when you earn $400 or when you make this many afghans and this many uh, sweaters, that's the type of answer we're looking for when you finish. So back to the actual problem, because I know you didn't have a lot of time to see it. You know the steps. This is what you're going to work from. Um, bring any questions, any confusion, you must have that problem worked out. That's going to be our discussion piece for class before we actually get you doing some more linear programming problems. Again, these are ones you're only get, get, going to get better at by practicing. So have at it. Bring everything with you to class.